What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast, episode 54. I'm James Walter, and with me is the crooked mustache himself, Mr. Chris Garcia. It's not crooked. It's not crooked. It's You're not right. crooked, it's just not long It's anymore. not crooked, you just trimmed one side a little more than the other. That's crooked. No, it's the crooked would be like you trimmed it like sideways. No. You just like one tip is a little... It's not that noticeable. No, no, it's really not noticeable. And I wouldn't have even said anything except for you mentioned it yeah, right before I right started. Before the show. So then it was on my mind. I would have, <laughs> which is good because I've been having a hard time coming up with good names for you lately. Like I don't know if you know, it was last week I was just like, "Oh, Mister uh, Never Lose Heart," just like your Twitter name. Which yep. last week's episode surprise just went live because someone published it to the website, but forgot to tag it so that the podcast feed would pick it up. Yep. So sorry about that. It was a pretty good episode. It was. It sounded very All things considered. Very good over Skype. Um, if you need something extra to do and don't mind some of your news being a week old, which most of what we talked about doesn't matter that it was a week old, so you should, you know, go check it out. Listen to this one first since you're already here. Since we are uh we've um battled skype now and we know how to perfect skype have skype you, sounds pretty well now have you, I've, I've got it figured out pretty well have you awesome. thought about bringing someone on over the airwaves again or a guest host we could but here's the thing doing this over youtube would i'd have to capture the video also and i just i'm not set up to do that mm-hmm. right now i could i'm just not set up to do it i have to rearrange a few gotcha. things on my computer which i mean wouldn't be like say it's not hard I just don't have it set up to do gotcha. it. So we could, though. Yeah, we could do that. Good. If we wanted to Skype in somebody, I think we should do. And that we could same. like put their face here between us, like, and then when they're talking, like, have it zoom in, or we could do like picture by picture, like they do in the news. You know, and be yep. like, we're here and they're here, and you know, we could do all sorts of cool stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Also, I recently purchased a green screen, which not planning on using it for this show, but maybe we'll see. Um, and I've been messing around in After Effects to make some better looking lower thirds. So our names will look much better and they'll appear and disappear in a lot more professional looking manner. Good. And, um, we're recording using Adobe Audition now. So our audio not only will be easier for me to clean up and capture and edit, it just captures better altogether. So lots of changes going on this week. Uh, so yeah, speaking of Adobe, Chris, yes, um, Adobe just released a new piece of software. Well, I guess it's software is a good, it's more of like a website design thing called Adobe portfolio and they're marketing it specifically towards photographers. Okay. Um, to make a portfolio, you know, for their resume, right? Yep. Um, so it's kind of competing with Squarespace. I don't know if you're familiar with Squarespace. It's basically a website that um, it's like seven or eight dollars a month for your starting package for your server space, and uh, you get their um, software to like help you develop your website. And it's really like what you see is what you get. Editing is supposed to be really simple to use. I've never used it because I already have a domain server that I use, and then I just install WordPress on top of that. But I've heard that Squarespace is really easy for people who don't know how to code websites to use. And like they have tons of templates and then you can take those templates and they're supposed to be really easy to modify. So Adobe is doing the same thing. They're specifically marketing it towards photographers and it has integration with like Photoshop and um, some of their other software pieces. Gotcha. So if you have Adobe Creative Cloud, which is what I have, so we get the whole Adobe suite, um, it's just included right in there. You get adobe portfolio and i guess you get the server space with it um so you just have to buy your domain name which is like not a big deal that's super cheap but if you don't have creative cloud it's ten dollars a month and you get portfolio and you get access to i know for sure you get photoshop and there was there was one other thing that i know it said for sure that you get access to so it's not the whole suite because obviously like you don't you don't need everything else if you're just doing it for a website, but you get Photoshop, which is really important since they're marketing it to photographers, so that way they can do all the editing. And there's a couple other pieces that are good for either the web design side of it or you know the photo side. So anything that's kind of related to the photo stuff you get. And then I don't think you said you get Dreamweaver because Portfolio itself is a tool now for doing that kind of website design. But it's really a good price, $10 a month. 
Um, I didn't say what kind of server capacity there is or anything like that, but um, from what I read, it sounds pretty interesting if you're a photographer and want to lay out your awesome. portfolio and you want Photoshop. I think that's a pretty good deal. $10 so a month. $10 yeah. a month. It's a really good deal. Um, like I said, Squarespace, I think, is like starts at $8 a month for a personal site, and then it goes up from there for a professional with like one item to sell, 20 items to sell, and then like enterprise size. Gotcha. Squarespace um, does a lot of advertising on podcasts. So they kind of are trying to market towards like podcasters and those kind of hobbyist people. Mm -hmm. Whereas like I said, Adobe is kind of competing with that same market, but they're really going after photographers mainly. And then I imagine they're going to branch out from there. But they specifically named it Portfolio because as like as a photographer, that is your resume. Like the way your pictures look and how you can arrange them. It says a lot more than like what you could put on a piece of paper saying, yeah, I've taken pictures for all these events. No one cares if your pictures don't look good. So that's really cool. Um, I haven't messed around with it, like I said, because I already have, again, I already have all my server stuff elsewhere. But I probably mess around with it a little bit just yeah. to see what it's like, just yeah. to get an idea for the tool. I love their tools. Like I said, I've been using more and more of their tools, especially within the, like, the last couple weeks. They're just really nice. I mean, I've been using Premiere, obviously, to do our video editing since we started. And that's great. Yep. Um, I had been using Corel software for video and using their Vid Studio, which is fine. I mean, it's a, definitely more of a consumer level tool, whereas the Adobe tools are more professional, very are more professional, semi-professional style tools. So they work very well, but they require a lot more computer. Ooh. Um, I've been really messing around with a lot with After Effects. And my laptop does not like it. It can make them fine, mm -hmm. but it cannot render them out to be usable very well. So you know that's fine. But uh, my laptop wasn't really designed for that. It has integrated graphics, so you okay. know it does really well for integrated graphics. But it seems to run Audition fine, so that's good. So we can record with that now. It sounds great. Awesome. All right. Also, Chris. So we got to talk about something else. You have an iPhone, right? Yes, I do. Do you use your iPhone before you go to bed? Yes, I do. Do you use it like while you're in bed? Yes, I do. Okay, well, you should stop doing that. Why is that? You should stop using your iPhone probably a few hours before you go to bed at least. Really? Yeah, Um. apparently, so this has been some research that's been going on for a long time, and I've been hearing this um, for a long time from different uh, podcasters I listen to talk about habits of uh, successful people, basically. Um, and one of their things is like no screens after 6 p.m. And okay. they're like, yeah, that's hard for a lot of people because like they watch TV with their family or they go to a movie, whatever. But they're like specifically like your computer screen or like um, your phone screen especially emits blue light. Okay. And the blue light, according to the research, uh, makes it harder for your brain to make, um, I believe it's called melatonin. And basically what melatonin does is it allows your brain to go to sleep at night. Gotcha. Yes, this is true. So basically um, using your cell phone up to going while you're in bed, especially, but even up to when you go to bed, uh, your brain thinks it's still daylight out basically because that gotcha. blue light yep. is similar. It's basically your brain sees it as you're like, it's still daylight. And so it doesn't produce as much or any of this... Um, chemical whatever you know in your brain mm -hmm. um that allows it to basically go to sleep at night which is why a lot of people feel like they're restless all night or even if they slept throughout the night they don't feel like they did because they can't go into deep sleep gotcha. or rem sleep or whatever you feel like calling it this week so um and on android there's some few apps that basically what they do is they put a red hue on all the the screen to to help eliminate the blue light there's a couple different apps on android which is great um android has you know apps for everything some of them work great, some of them work like garbage, and some of them just are garbage. Um, so Apple, um, you know, a little bit more strict with their app store and what kind of things the apps can and can't do to your phone. So instead of developing an app or letting someone else develop an app for this, the next iOS app, the next iOS update is going to include something called night mode or night shift or something, night shift, I okay. think is what it's called. I know... Uh, iOS just came out uh, on the 21st with 
9.3? 9.2.1. Okay, maybe it was... I can't remember if it was 9.21 or 9.3. Let's... It's me, most likely going to be 9.3 sure. or 9.2.2. Because um, this was... I saw this story earlier, like end of last week. Okay. So, yeah. iOS 9.3 will include Night Shift. And what does that release? Um, it doesn't say in this article. This is from Scientific America just talking about why Apple's doing this. So basically, they're going to have an app called Night Shift. Or not an app. It'll be a mode in iOS. It's baked in. Okay. And basically what it'll do is simulate the same thing that all these Android apps are doing and basically cut the blue light out of the screen. That'd be nice. So that um, it won't be as harsh on your eyes. And it'll also allow your brain to actually produce this stuff that helps your brain to go to sleep at night. I wonder if you can put it on a self-timer, for an example, to start at 6 o'clock. So the app that I'm using right now, um, just because I've been doing it's some very, very, very informal uh, self-study on this, just kind of get an idea. Um, I haven't noticed a huge difference, but I don't use my phone a lot at night anyways. So um, the one I use, though, it's called Twilight. And basically, what it does is at sun, as the sun at sunset time, it starts to slowly increase the the red hue up to whatever percent you put. I have mine at forty percent. Gotcha. Because it's very it's pretty noticeable. Um, so it follows the sunrise and sunset pattern basically. So I'll be sitting at work, and since it gets dark so early now, like at work, like towards the end of the day, my phone will start to get a red hue on it. It makes everything look weird, but if it does work, it'd be great. Like if you like to read before you go to bed. If you you know, have to check Facebook that one last time, gotcha. or if you're Snapchatting, although I don't know why you'd want to Snapchat in bed, but some people are just strange like that, Chris. Who would do that? I just don't know. I can't imagine. I try not to at night. Um, but no, but in all seriousness, though, so this is really, um, it's really good on Apple's part to go ahead and say, yes, this, there is all this research saying that this could be, for some people, a huge problem for them trying to sleep at night. I can probably do something say about it. that this is probably a big reason that I cannot sleep at night. Yeah, it definitely. Um, I like the research from what I've read, and like I said, I've read the Scientific American article on, and I've read a few other articles. From what I've read, it is good research. Like it's not um, bad. It's like it's pretty founded. Um, a lot of scientists seem to agree with it. A lot of people who research sleep habits. And the effects of light on your sleep, they all seem to agree that um, the blue light from, especially from like LED screens and LCD screens, really does affect how well you can sleep at night. Gotcha. So that's good for all the iOS people. They'll get it baked right in, and they'll just have it there. Everyone on Android still has to resort to going to get an app for it. That's one of the weirdest things that you state because I always had a problem sleeping, and if this room was pitch black dark, mm -hmm. and your microwave timer was on like that yeah it would bother me while i was yeah. trying to sleep i'm that picky with sleep yeah so using your phone before bed is no good for you probably exactly. you should probably cut it out exactly i used to have to cover up my uh laptop with a, a t-shirt so it didn't reflect the light like the blinking lights that you have in your laptop why don't you just turn it off excuse me true you that should just yeah. turn it off yeah that's why I turn off all my computer that night. Rachel leaves hers on. And, but I mean, it's in the other room for yeah, us too, though, yeah. so it doesn't matter. I used to listen to podcasts when I try to sleep. You could do that on your phone. That was before my I had a phone like that. Oh, well, that's fair. But, um, so yeah, there's that. So that's really cool. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about before the break, Chris. Okay. So, like, right before we came in to record. Okay, it was actually right before I ate dinner, but it's pretty close to right before we came to record. I read this article. And this is what it said. It said, new bill sign, left-handers get disability. Okay. And it was from Mouthwire. And basically it said that um, Obama signed Obama signed in some bill about left-handers and that he himself was left-handed, which I don't know if that's true or not. But, um, and there was like this thing called like the American Society for Left-Handed. So I don't remember. Anyways, there's this whole article about how left-handers are going to be extreme left-handed people are going to get um, disability because of discrimination against left-handers, and it starts February 1st, and I was like, this is odd. Yeah. And so Mouthwire, if you don't know, is a satire site. Okay. So it's not real. It's not real. Okay. No. But it was really funny, 
And I read this, and I don't, I don't say that to bring up a uh, mouthwire or any particular satire, because I, I think satire websites are hilarious. Tabloids. Yeah, not even tabloids. Tabloids are more like rumor mill kind of gotcha. stuff. This is more like The Onion, where they just make fake news articles. Gotcha. That are, that are something that like sounds something like it could be real, or like kind of pivoting off of something that's real. You know, that kind of yeah. stuff like The Onion does. Um, I say that because I saw it posted on someone's Facebook, and they were like, wow, I can't believe this or something like that, which I think the person who posted it knew that it was satire, but I'm not positive. Gotcha. Let's hope it did. Um, but someone commented on it like was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this, this is ridiculous. And I had already commented before that LOL because I thought it was hilarious. But I didn't want to like, spoil it for people who like hadn't yeah. read the article yet. But I also like... And so anyway, someone commented below me was like, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. And so I replied to their comment. I was like, Mouthwire is a satire site. And then someone else liked my comment because, like, they get it. They, they get it. it out, yeah. And, like, I don't say that to say, like, I don't, I like satire. I think it's hilarious. Like, satire movies are funny to me, and, like, satire websites are funny to me. And I say this to say that, people, I need you to help me with something. Do some research before you start posting things on Facebook. Like the, um, the million or the billion dollar. Thing yes. with 1.3 billion yes like the thing where it was said like if someone if instead of someone winning the powerball when it was like what was it it was really like 1.4 billion or it was, yeah one point we whatever 1. it was 2, that 1. right 4. before the last big win they were like if instead you divide that among all the people in the world it was be in the united states which was about was it the united states i don't remember yeah, about divided was. by 300 million it was like 344 million so yeah it was everyone in the u.s maybe and then they were like everyone would get 4.3 million dollars something like that yes and the funny thing is that math isn't even close to right. They didn't carry the no. decimal correctly. And if you took one, what it was like 1.4 billion, I think is what it was. Yeah, divided Maybe by 300 million. Maybe they did it million. 1.3. It was after 144 million. The it answer is like $4.33. Not yes. $4.3 million. Nope. Stuff like that. Like if, you, if like if you get the joke in it and you're reposting it and you're like, haha, this was funny or this was clever, like a satire yep. website, cool. If you're posting a picture with just incorrect facts, that's a blanket picture that's not tied to someone that's like obviously a joke website. People, please help me and stop your, spreading this kind of stuff on do Facebook. Do your research. Or anywhere else on the internet for that matter. Like, it's just not necessary. And like, I read articles all the time from like semi-legitimate websites about stuff. And I'm like, all you got to do is just go, go to Snopes.com. Yeah. They, they, they know everything. They'll tell you which parts of it are real and which parts of it are fake. Most of the time, everything in it was fake except for like one sentence. Like I read something and like it was like a sentence was like, they're like, yes, this is what was said, but it was taken way out of context. And like people, you could save yourself so much grief and embarrassment if you just do a little bit of research before you just believe everything you see on the internet. Please do your research. And that's why I bring that up. I thought it was hilarious. I have a friend who's left-handed, and I was going to post it to him and be like, look, you get disability now, but I was like, I can't, I don't want to, I don't, if it was like The Onion, I would have, because pretty much everyone on everyone the internet knows, the, knows onion the Onion now, although every now and then, like, can make something really good that people don't catch, but um, I didn't post it because I was just like, I don't want to, I don't know, I still might, I haven't decided yet, but it was really funny, but I say that to, like, people, help me out in this, and, like, I don't mind you posting funny satire, but make sure that you're aware that it, it that it's real or satire first and just help me out with that because like it's just ridiculous if you do we should start a segment of dumb dumb people on facebook i can't call it dumb people on facebook chris we're supposed to be nice the whole point of the show was to be like you know a better side of the news world not, yes not to be picking up people i'm not trying to pick on anyone i'm really not like i said the person who posted it i'm pretty sure they knew it was satire gotcha i'm just saying that to be like come on people let's let's help each other out a little bit here that's all. So, Chris, what do you say we take a break? And we're 20 minutes in. We're 20 minutes in. We're cruising along. We're doing great. And when we come back, let's talk about um, a dude that has a sweet wheelchair and a few other stories. So don't go away. We'll be right back. 